Greetings, Otaku Faithful. Thank you for joining me again this week. Once again, it's Larry Williams, OAW Commander-in-Chief, and I'm here to bring you yet again another Sons of Anarchy episode review right here on Otaku Assemble! Weekly, as always, here to bring you the latest in this week's Sons of Anarchy episode review. Now, before I jump into this review, I need to once again address uh, the issue that has become the NFL recap videos. Because... It was my intent to go ahead and kick off that new segment of videos yesterday. However, yesterday was a very, very long and busy day for me yesterday. And quite frankly, by the time uh, by the time the Giants Redskin, not the Giants, the Cowboys, excuse me, by the time the Cowboys Redskin game was over last night, um, just really didn't have any energy to do it. I was. Uh, there, there was no energy left. Um, shit, is, I don't really have that much energy to knock out this video. Uh, I just figured I might as well go ahead and knock this shit out before uh, before I lose my nerve. So, what's going on with that? With the NFL recap videos for right now? Um, that that segment's going to be in limbo for a while until I can figure out exactly um, when would be the best time to do it and I don't know it's just you know it, it's just one of those things where you're trying to get something off the ground and the stars just don't seem to align it's like it's like shit just doesn't work the way you plan you know what I'm saying so until further notice I'm going to go ahead and just just put that segment on hold until, and until I can figure out exactly how I'm going to do those videos and when. Um, yeah, I'm, ju I'm just going to leave it off like that. So, let's jump into this week's Sons of Anarchy episode. Now, this is Season 4, Episode 4. And, I, I put, shit, I don't even remember the name, uh, the title of this episode. I believe it's like... Uh, uh, Yinverta, something like that, I believe it is. It's, it's, it's either a Spanish or a Latin name, something like that. But, but, but man, let, let's jump into this review. Because there's so many things that happen in this episode that's just... Ah. Okay, so... Alright, well, pretty much the big thing that takes place in this episode is that Jax, Clay, and Jax, Clay, and the rest of the club, they pretty much, they head out to Arizona to attend a, an, an auto show, um, an, uh, an, an auto expo, if you will, an automobile and motorcycle expo, and they meet up with their Arizona charter. And they're pretty much, they're out there to deliver the guns to the cartel. Using the local charter as their, uh, as you know, extra backup security. And so, uh, and so, you know, the whole, the whole plan is to, you know, head to Arizona, use the expo as, you know, as a, uh, as a, um, an alibi. Use the local charter as some backup security and pretty much drop off the guns and pick up the coat to run back to Charming with. However, Jax, Jax and the rest of the gang, they find out that apparently their Arizona charter has been selling crank. And they've been doing it for a couple of months now. I believe they said four months in was when they had the, the vote to start doing that. However... This took place right after the death of one of the club members and after another member resigned from the club. So, of course, you know, Jax, Clay, and the rest of the crew, they had to, you know, go ahead and figure out what the hell's been going on. And they find out that apparently the VP and the Sarge of the Arizona Charter had been, they pretty much had been dealing they pretty much been dealing, and when one of the club members found out about it, they killed him, blackmailed the other, forced him out of the club, and then went ahead and put that thing to a vote so that the rest of the club could be in on their dealing. 
But the reason, the, the, the thing about this episode that I found so goddamn hypocritical, this, 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 the whole, this whole thing is so fucking hypocritical. Honestly, this is the pot calling the kettle black. And Bobby called fucking Clay out on this bullshit. He said, and I quote, Muling and selling is the same shit. It's the same shit. What he meant was this. How is it that Clay Jax and the rest of, you know, the charming, the charter, the Redwood original charter, how is it that they can sit there and pass judgment on the Arizona charter about selling drugs when they're fucking hauling them? Muling and selling is the same shit. And I agree with Bobby. I agree with Bobby. Now, you're probably saying, Larry, how the fuck can you agree with Bobby? Mute. Transporting drugs and selling drugs are two completely different actions. Yes, they are. But the reason why they're the same thing is because they take the same risk. Honestly, think about it. If you have a, if you have a kilo of cocaine on your person, and you get stopped by the police. You think it's going to matter to them whether or not you're just transporting it or whether or not you're selling it? No, it doesn't fucking matter. Muling and fucking selling has the same risk. So it's the same shit. And I agree with Bobby on this. I'm taking, I'm backing Bobby up on that. It's the same shit. And honestly, Clay, Jax, and the rest of the club have no fucking right has no right to fucking demand that of that Arizona charter when they're sitting around doing the same goddamn thing that's hypocrisy at its finest hypocrisy at its finest so okay so also what happens in this week's episode apparently uh we get formally we get formally introduced to um Rita and Rita <laughs> is the uh the new sheriff of charming his wife we saw her in last week's episode when we uh i believe it was the sheriff and his wife coming out of the uh, the uh what is it the paternal ward i believe that's where they were coming from but we but you know we saw her but we weren't formally introduced we finally get formally introduced to rita who apparently is a florist and funny enough we get introduced to her through Gemma. Because we find out that apparently Gemma has a knack, or not a knack, but um, planting is one of her hobbies. And when some of her, you know, when some of her plants go bad, she goes into, you know, goes to the florist to talk with him about it. And this is also when we find out that apparently one of the gardens, uh, I guess you can call it one of the historical landmarks of Charming is actually going under due to Hal's new uh, development project. And Rita, she has a committee set up um, that is trying to actually prevent that from happening. And so Gemma, Gemma decides to go ahead and join the committee. However, she does so under Tara's name. Now, they did mention that, you know, um, that committee does, you know, the, 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 the names that are attached to it does bring in the same type of like high class crowd. So you could argue that Gemma used terrorist information so that, you know, having a doctor on that committee would actually bring more recognition to the committee and by doing so make their their uh, their campaign to save the garden much more successful. That's one way of looking at it. Me personally, I think Gemma has ulterior motives for doing what she did. Not sure what those are yet, but definitely something to keep an eye out on. And since I brought up Tara, that's going to bring me to probably what I would consider to be the most the most um, interesting part of this week's episode. And that was that Piney, of all people, has approached Tara and spoke with her about what she knows about John Teller. And I have to say, this was very intriguing because those are two of the most unlikely characters that you would think would actually, you know, um, gravitate towards one another. Uh, one thing, one thing I do like about this show. One thing I like that I've always liked about Sons of Anarchy is that they know how to, uh, they know how to use their characters very well. You know, um, 
you never get a sense in this show that this character is uh, that this character is useless or that this character is pointless. Um, no, every character has a specific role that they play. But not only that, the way that these characters interact with each other is so fucking good. And this is another key example of that because who would have ever thought that Piney would reach out or confine to in Terra? You see what I'm saying? And vice versa. Now, yeah, you could make the argument that, oh, well, you know, Piney and Terra and Jax, you know, they're kind of all on, you know, the same team here in this this sort of opposition of Clay and Gemma. You know, they're, uh, they're you know, those are the three characters who, in a sense, uh, are the closest to John Teller. Um, you, you see what I'm saying? Where it's like, you know, uh, you have Piney who actually knew John. You have Jax who has, you know, all these memories of his dad. And of course, you know, him and Piney, you know, they have the, the manuscript that, they're, that they've that they gone off of. But also Tara, you know, in a sense, she's begun to know a little bit about John based off of the letters that he wrote, that she read. So, so yeah, you could say that eventually that would have come about. But honestly, I didn't see that coming. And it seems like, it seems like that we're going to it seems like they're developing this type of uh this type of premature friendship between piney and tara and i do like it, it because it changes the dynamic it brings piney back into the big picture because let's face it piney's kind of been you know out of the big picture since season one so it brings him back into the big picture and i, I like i like that you know like i said they know they know how to use their characters uh and speaking of characters the freaking uh the assistant attorney man he he has finally he has finally uh moved on this 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 grunt on this this uh this board game this this chess game that we've been that uh that that um uh, that has been being set up throughout the the season you know um uh, the, the the weird thing about the assistant attorney you know, to, to use the chessboard once again. It seems like within the first three episodes, he was kind of, you know, he was he was kind of eyeing the chessboard. You know, he, he sees all the pieces on the table, you know, all the pieces on the board, and he's kind of, okay, okay, okay. He's kind of, he's scoping things out. Now, in this episode, it seems like he's actually starting to, starting to move because three things the assistant attorney does in this week's episode that's going to change the game up a little bit. Number one, he meets Gemma. He meets Gemma and he introduces himself as a, um, what was he, uh, was he a, did he introduce himself as a landscaper or some shit like that? It was, it was something like that. So he's already made contact with the, with the MC in a way. He's already made contact with the MC because keep in mind, they still don't know that he exists. They still don't know that he exists and he didn't even, and once again, his whole profession as the assistant attorney, he kept from Gemma. So, number one, he made contact. Number two, what he's done, um, he has went, he, uh, he pretty much put out in a wire to find out more about um, Romeo, who is Danny Trejo's character, about Romeo's operation. And we find out about Romeo's second in command. Now, I'm not sure at this point, like what they found out about Romeo's second in command, I'm not sure exactly what's the significance of that information, but they seem pretty damn excited about it. And I need to go, I need to go back and actually rewatch the episode to, to see what that was about, but they seem pretty, you know, stoked about that. So that was number two, okay? And number three... What we saw towards the end of this week's episode was that he made contact with another MC member, and that was Otto. He went to prison and visited Otto, and what he told Otto was that you know um, because the new because the new sheriff department has taken over Charming, you know he's like we're doing follow-ups on some of the investigations, one of which being that of Otto's wife. If you will recall, in season two, Otto's wife was murdered um, from who we assume to be. Um, the the uh, the rival porn 
porn uh, tycoon that, uh, you know, that was competition for, for her studio, we assumed he was the one who killed her. However, the assistant attorney told Otto that not only are they supposedly following up on that investigation, but they suspect Bobby might have been, you know, might be the culprit because Bobby and uh, homegirl whose name I forget, uh, what is it, Lorraine? I, I believe that was her name. Um, you know, they had a they had a little relationship and a little not a relationship, more of a little fling in season two. So, so, so why would I bring that up in this in in this review? Because the reason for that being is this. He's trying to rattle Otto's cage. He already knows that Otto doesn't have much going for him. You know, I mean, pretty much Otto's accepted the fact that he's going to spend the rest of his life in prison. So he knows Otto doesn't have much going for him. So he's trying to rattle his cage. Very gutsy move on the uh, on the assistant attorney's part. That's a very, very gutsy, gutsy move. So, uh, so it's just a matter of time to seeing how these things, how these developments, how they, how they work out. But I gotta tell you, man, this season, for f man, it's like I said, the the sons, the MC, everyone they're close to, they're just falling deeper and deeper into decadence, man. It's, it's a downward spiral. It's a downward spiral, man, and. Things aren't really looking up for the sun. I don't see things looking up for the suns anytime soon. Uh, like it's just like I said in last week's review. I got a feeling that um, that the suns are going to get a really, 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 really hard kick in the ass at the end of this season, man. Uh, but hey, you know. Um, that's the way the cookie crumbles. So that'll go ahead. That'll do it for me this week for my Sons of Anarchy review. Uh, once again, I apologize if this, if this review isn't as you know energetic as uh, as some of my other videos. But you know it is pretty late. It has been another long day. I'm tired as hell. Um, and and like I said, you know so far this season's been a lot to swallow. So you know we're we're we're, we're pretty much just taking shit one episode at a time right now. You know because. Uh, yeah, shit's going to get intense towards the end of this season. So, we're just trying to mentally and emotionally prepare ourselves for that. <laughs> but with that said, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to wrap this video up. Uh, I want to thank you all for joining me this week. Um, once again, comment, rate, subscribe, guys, if uh, by all means, you know, if you're up to it. And don't forget to follow me on Facebook and on Twitter. Just, you know, Facebook.com slash Otaku Assemble, Twitter.com slash Otaku Assemble. Um, I'm also on blog TV, blogtv.com slash otaku symbol, and then Skype username uh, otaku underscore symbol. And with that said, what's coming up later this week? I have. Um, I'm, I'm still on the fence whether or not I will try to knock out an NFL recap video this week. Um, not sure guys in the comment below let me know what you think about that because like i said i've been having trouble with getting this thing off the ground uh friday i don't i don't believe we'll have a thundercast episode this friday so there may not be a review and some of you guys have given really really kick-ass suggestions for you know uh plausible replacements for plausible substitutes for the thundercast review until thundercast come back on the air with new episodes um, still taking those under consideration and then as far as this weekend this weekend uh, will kick off the month of October which will be I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to officially announce that this that October will be Samurai Month here on OAW because October is going to be my Roroni Kenshin's anime favorites which I will actually do two videos dedicated to the Roroni, Roroni Kenshin series my anime favorites for Roroni Kenshin, that's going to be the October video. And also, I'm going to go ahead and review Samurai X Trust and Betrayal and Samurai X Reflections. So, two Roroni Kenshin dedication bids coming in October. And also, 
manga of the month for October will be Vagabond. And as far as anime of the month, I believe I will go ahead and I will take a look at what's the name of it. Is it Shijuri? I believe is the name of it. I believe it's a uh, it's a more mature um, anime, and I believe that does have to do with samurai. And if not samurai, probably samurai. I believe it's a samurai anime. Um, Shijuri, I believe Shiguri. I believe that's how you pronounce it. Uh, S H I G E R I. Uh, most of you, uh, I know a lot of you have seen it before. Like I know my man Ziploc Gory, he's a big fan of that series. I have not seen it yet. So for an anime of the month, I mean, shit, and it has an English dub. So that that's uh, that's actually one that I've been looking at doing for a while now. So yeah, like I said, October is officially Samurai Month here on OAW. But also, um, one one of the suggestions for. Uh, a substitute video for Thunder the Cats that I got. Um, one that I'm really taking into consideration more so than some of the others. Um, in which case, uh, October is going to be a pretty, pretty interesting month here on OAW. But with that said, this is Larry Williams, OAW Commander-in-Chief. I'm signing off and I'll catch you all later. Peace.